My name is Ruby Warrington and my book is Material Girl Mystical World. The book is actually based on my journey creating The Numinous, which is a conscious lifestyle platform covering all things esoteric, mystical and new age, but updated for what I call the now age. And so the book is really an introduction to many of the subjects that I cover through the lens of my personal experiences. Um, so everything from astrology through tarot, through psychics, crystals, shamanism, plant medicine, all that fun stuff told through the lens, like I said, of my personal experience and my own transformation using these tools and incorporating them into my kind of modern city life. It's interesting, I often have been describing this book as a kind of anti eat pray, love um, In eat pray, love Elizabeth Gilbert goes to meditate for months on an ashram in India in silence and has a deep spiritual awakening. I, however, moved from the UK to New York in 2012 and so began my spiritual awakening in the heart of the city that kind of like encapsulates the heart of the capitalist American dream. And during that time period, I've gone from having a very materialistic career working in fashion magazines and lifestyle journalism and really measuring a lot of my value, my worth and the meaning I took from life from the things that I had amassed and things like physical things but also things like status and um, kind of approval from others etc to really kind of like finding alternative ways to find meaning, happiness and purpose in my life through all of the different spiritual tools that I've been experimenting with and investigating as I've embarked on my numinous path. The trick really um, is that once, in my experience anyway, once you begin to identify with this kind of spiritual inner self, all of the external stuff gets sort of put back in its place, which is as external, surface, superficial, but fun, and fabulous and necessary, but not the be all and end all of life. Definitely not what's going to bring us happiness, fulfillment, a sense of self-worth, which in the, in, the, in the modern world, we're often taught that actually a sense of self-worth, a sense of meaning, a sense of fulfillment, happiness, comes from the things that we accumulate, be that clothes, houses, um, the job that we've worked so hard to get that gives us all this status or whatever. And so actually identifying as a spiritual person helps to keep perspective on the situation and keep those things in the position of these are things which enhance my life, but they're not the be all and end all of my purpose as a human being. I certainly found my dharma through launching my site, The Numinous. It wasn't something that I was expecting to do. I was simply following a passion of mine um, and taking the career that I had followed in journalism, adding my own personal passion for astrology and the study of all things esoteric and mystical to that and creating this platform. I'm busily going about doing this. And after a few months, I begin to get emails from people saying that they had found my website and thank you so much for creating this platform because it had really spoken to things that they were curious about but didn't know, didn't know how to find a community to talk about. It had made them think about their lives in a different way. It had inspired them to start their own passion projects. So through creating this project and doing what just felt like work that felt fun and interesting and engaging and fulfilling to me, I was inadvertently helping other people on some level. Sure, I wasn't kind of like, you know, donating a bunch of money to charity or going to volunteer at a, a shelter, which is often what we think of when we think of giving back or contributing something of value. But if your work is in any way uplifting people, helping people, helping people, in inspiring people, helping people connect to their own passions, you're also doing your dharma. How to go about finding your dharma, it can be the tricky part. I talk in the book about how not all dharmas are created equal in the eyes of our parents, society, and our ego. We tend to gravitate these sort of work that fulfills, um, fulfills our material needs, our ego's needs for recognition, um, and society's needs for us to conform in some kind of a way and to toe the path that has been supposedly drawn out for us. So the difficult part can be really connecting to like, well, what is this? What is the thing that really lights me up? One thing I always 
a great place to start with this, is to really think about when you were a kid, like under the age of seven, what were you really, really into? What were you really excited about? And take some time to really think about what that is. For me, I always loved telling stories. And I remember my mom when I was a kid, she used to call me Radio Ruby <laughs> because I would always be giving her just this running commentary of like what was going on in my head and always telling tales on my brother, which I used to get told off about. But that was me practicing my fledgling kind of like reporter researcher muscle, you know? I've always loved telling stories and that's what I do with The Numinous and that's what I've done with this book. And lo and behold, in doing this, um, I consistently get feedback that I'm helping people and inspiring people and uplifting people. The word to meditate simply means to think. And so any practice that helps you connect to what you're thinking, become aware of your thoughts, could be termed meditation. So be aware of what meditation is. Also, don't be intimidated if you find it really difficult to meditate. Because like I said, the brain doesn't want to stop thinking. If the brain stops thinking, you're asleep, although it could be argued you're still thinking while you're dreaming. You're in a coma or you're brain dead. And so the brain is designed to not stop. <laughs> um, so it's very, very difficult. Um, and as we all know, it's very difficult to stick to things we're not very good at. So um, if you find you're not very good at meditation, i.e. you're finding that you're frustrated, bored, and can't actually stop your thoughts, it's very, it's, it's hard to stay motivated to stick with it. However, the health benefits, um, that are widely documented now and that I've experienced in my own life um, that come as a result of having a meditation practice are absolutely worth the struggle. Just be aware that that struggle is you meditating, that is the practice, um, and seek to bring that into your life, even if it's just for a couple of minutes every day. Amethyst is known as the sobriety stone and it's said to help prevent against drunkenness. But I think this is because it's known as a relaxing and calming stone. So having amethyst around can um, help to quell some of the cravings that may lead you into addictive um, substances. So those are three that it's super easy to, to incorporate into your life. Also, um, I love a bit of gold and citrine is known as the success stone. It's said to promote feelings of abundance um, and attract more abundance into your life. So for any entrepreneurs out there, citrine is a great stone to have around.